G'day folks, time for a little Monday update, um, nothing too spectacular, it hasn't been that eventful recently but I do have some little uh, bits of video to compile together, um, I've got a bit from last week where I was going to do an update like this but never got around to doing the intro, uh, so basically just poking around at a um, little minivan that I borrowed from work, or a little sub minivan, it's a Volkswagen Caddy, they sort of cross between say a, a minivan like a Mitsubishi Express or a um, Hyundai iLoad and um, one of the smaller micro advertising vans like a Nissan S-Cargo or the old Citroen or whatever it was, the Tin Snail. Um, it's sort of halfway between. It's actually quite a nice size for somebody like me with my business and what I do, but it's already gone seven grand. I wasn't particularly happy with the way the clutch pedal pulsed, although they all supposed to, many of them are supposed to do that, even the Passats and Tiguans do it but some people reckon it's worse when the dual mass flywheel and clutch are going out and I don't believe that one had ever had a clutch or flywheel put in it in 200 and something thousand k's which I don't believe it's probably been done at 120 or so but it's um it's not very happy it's basically I'd call it due for a clutch and flywheel kit which is $1,200 just for the parts so yeah wait maybe one day I'll find a lower kilometre one it's a cute little thing, it drives really well, it was surprisingly quick, but no, not my cup of tea at the moment. So anyway, under new lights, um, Julian and I spent uh, Saturday afternoon putting we've got four or five of them up, there's another two still to go, uh, particularly replaced the old battens like the centre one where the plastics were falling apart and tubes had previously fallen out of it, uh, that's no longer an issue now but some of them are just a little bit too bright where they are. I'll just have to uh, pick a different wattage of tube, but they're all good. So they're all gonna get um, all taken off the little plug leads and actually wired together with um, 1.5 mil um, TPS flat, flat cable and uh, connected to a single breaker on the main panel. Um, still gotta hear back from my electrician about um, getting a 60 amp feed put on the house, but basically we've found because my ceiling is still wired with black rubber coated wire for all the lights all of that has to be remade as soon as he touches and replaces the panel by law he has to replace everything downstream of that which is not up to code and that includes all the wiring in my ceiling and since this is a long-term basic perma lease place that's not mine even though they don't care what i do here i'm not going to spend that much money um, on a place that's basically going to get bulldozed and have a set of units or blocks put on it. So, yeah. I know a lot of people think I own this place, but I don't. I basically have the run of it, but I don't physically own it, and I'm not willing to spend over thousands of dollars getting everything remade. Otherwise, I would have had three-phase fitted in here years ago. It's out the front on the pole. I would have had three-phase fitted years ago if I'd known I'd be, be here this long, but still, it's not my place. Why spend the money on something that you're not going to uh, keep? Anyway, enough with that. Um, yeah, so I don't think I'll be getting a 60 amp feed out here, but I'm just going to get some of this stuff um, fitted up and made up to code properly. Um, there are still some dodgy areas. They're a lot better than they were when I moved in. Well, rotted rubber extension cords almost catching fire is a lot worse than what I've got at the moment. Um, when I moved in, technically the real estate should not have had someone move in given some of the horrors that I had to replace but it's um, largely pretty good at the moment I just want to I want more amps but I don't think I'm going to get it um, these lights work really well like that's just nicely lit up I've got the triple triple five footer and multiple double four footers and it just works so well especially with the nice new blue light, well not blue light, but they call them like a an ultra white. The difference between the two tubes is noticeable. There's an old tube and a nice new one. That one's got a little bit of a flicker to it. Yeah, you can see the end starting to go out on them. So I've got to get some more tubes. I'll get a whole carton of them, decent Crompton lighting ones. Um, I've tried buying Mirabella ones, but they last about six months, then go red. I'll um, I'll get some Crompton lighting or other industrial grade tubes and see how they go. Anyway, that's about right. Um, 
little bit of stuff coming up during the week, a few other little bits and pieces videos to put up, like rebuilding the Mercedes ABS pump, um, or rebrushing it. Didn't fix the um, lights coming on, but at least I know now it doesn't have tiny little stubs left for brushes. Um, and also later, sort of the next month or so, we've got uh, another shooting outing. Uh, unless there's anything particularly exceptional I won't even see about filming. Um, 22s and shotguns are basically 22s and shotguns, they're not all that exciting, but if there's anything particularly big or particularly uh, old, I'll definitely do a video. I'm hoping someone owns another black powder um, because uh, I fired them years ago and loved it. I love the smell of burning black powder in the morning. And uh, it's probably going to be, probably not my first owned firearm, but it's up there like as a second. But I don't want something enormous like a brown best. So if anyone has a suggestion that won't break my arm or shoulder, um, let me know. Because as much as I love a brown best, I hear they kick like a mule. 58 cal round ball with such a long barrel. That's a fair old thumper. They do look beautiful though. Um, again, it doesn't have to be round ball. It could be a more modern rifled musket that fires a minet ball. I can still get all the casting dies and things from Lee reloading. Uh, black powder is fairly cheap and so are percussion caps so given the amount of rounds a minute you can do which is maybe two rounds a minute for a very skilled rifleman um, it's not a very expensive thing to shoot and it'll keep you shooting for quite a while it's uh, probably one of the better ones um, outside of small caliber like 22 bulk ammo for 40 I think it's 45 bucks for 5,000 rounds um, or what else was there? Yeah, Remington Bucket of Bullets. It might be two and a half thousand rounds or something, but yeah, Remington Bucket of Bullets with its probably 5% dud rate is 45 bucks for the lot. And uh, shotgun shells, depending on the gauge and the um, loading, vary from like 40 cents around up to $3 something around. 40 cents being like what I was shooting in the original video, um, just standard steel, two and a half inch number six shot for practice. Uh, all the way up to 3 inch magnum, rifled magnum slugs um, for hunting deer and other large game, big um, kangaroos, that sort of stuff. Um, not the kind of thing I'd bother shooting. There's no real... I'm not really into hunting game, but again, it's still nice to be able to hunt um, ferals and vermin on private property. But it's... yeah. When I buy firearms, it's going to be for sport or just for... Um, historical purposes like black powder or there are a few black powder shooting guilds and associations around it'd be interesting to check out um, same with the um, classic military rifleman um, Lang Lang is the best spot for that because they have classic um, shoots the Mad Minute with the 303 Lee Enfield um, you've got long range shoots with the Lee Enfields and Mauser 98s and stuff like that basically any old bolt action military rifle they have a specialty um, club and shooting segment for it and it looks like a lot of fun. Um, I've fired them before but I've never done it competitively or anything like that so that could be a bit of fun in future too because Australia made hundreds of thousands if not millions of short magazine Lee Enfield 303 rifles and there are still a huge amount of them around. They were never officially banned. I know a lot of people think all guns were banned in Australia but they weren't. It was just military styles and um, semi-automatics. Semi-automatics became highly regulated. Pump-action shotguns again highly regulated. You need a specific purpose for them like primary hunting or um, government pest control. But everything else like bolt guns, lever guns, um, pump-action rifles, break opens, they're all still fine. You do need a license for it. You do need to sit a firearm safety course which is pretty much common sense and I think everyone in the world should have to sit one. But they're not completely banned. So, there is still hope. Anyway, that's enough rambling about guns. <laughs> it's a pretty thorny topic. As long as people are civil about discussing the politics of it, I don't care, but... Yeah, people do get riled up about them. Personally, I just class them as pieces of machinery that can potentially harm people. And uh, if you use them properly, people don't get hurt. If you're an absolute idiot with them or have malicious intent, you shouldn't even be touching them to start with. Anyway. Um, I'll just attach the uh, rest of that little van video and that'll be your fairly lengthy update for the 
week essentially. I'm not going to be doing more than maybe one a week. And uh, yeah, as you can see, stuff going on. Stuff to finish off. Okay, so while the Barine is getting inspected for any necessary repairs, I borrowed this from work. Um, we're currently selling it, they want 11 for it. Uh, it's got a few quirks, but I wouldn't mind one one day. Not at 11 for the amount of Ks this one's done, and yeah, it's alright. The diesel, it's kind of fun. It's got a lot, plenty of get up and go. The clutch is weird, to say the least. <laughs> Very weird. Comes with the racking and everything. Again, not something I'd really use. But good space. It's not a full size minivan, it's sort of a micro van, I guess, or sub mini. It's not micro, but sub mini van. Um, Volkswagen Caddy TDI. Not a bad little critter. Clutch is a bit janky, it's a little like a push button, to about an inch of travel. very little travel, it's not an inch, it's a little bit more, but when you first get in it's like, where's the travel? <laughs> very easy to stall taking off in first, but until you get used to it anyway, I mean I got used to it straight away, but I haven't driven this in several years. Manual, the clutch pedal, despite the fact that it's a really small modular one, gives you a nasty little foot massage, it's almost like something's rubbing on the clutch cable or something, just this, like that at low idle or low, just taking off, you just get this strange vibration through it, it's not right. And the engine itself doesn't sound the best, it sounds like a little bit of um, oh, maybe irregular diesel knock, it's done 200 and something thousand k's so I don't blame it for being a bit tired. It's there. Typical European is the hood release on that side. Nope. Nope. I don't know, maybe you have to be a qualified dealer to open the hood on one of these. Say, is it still on that side? Nope. Hmm. That's weird. Try and find the hood release. <laughs> Man, this camera is getting worse. I don't know how much of it that you got. I just completely lost focus when I wasn't even set to try and auto focus. Anyway, I don't know where the hood release is. I'll find it in a minute. But yeah, not a bad little vehicle. Yeah. It's got a cubby hole. They're yeah, handy. What's it done? It's not the same. Basic dash panel. Too bad. I think, it, I think they said it's done. Oh, there we go. Kilometers, 200. Yeah, 235,000 k's. That's pretty good. But it's a commercial vehicle, commercial Volkswagen, so it's probably good for a lot more. I'd say it'd be good for quite a lot more. Just like Mercedes industrial or commercial diesels, like the Mercedes M class I've got has a 2.7 CDI, which is used in a lot of the Sprinter vans, the big ones. Um, and again, they develop a pretty good reputation. Now let me find that hood release. Oh, there you go, I found it. It was hiding down on the uh, correct side. They don't let you see much of it. 
rebuilt alternator. Uh, I know it's had a new turbo recently as well. It's not too bad. Timing belt service marks or something. That high pressure pump. The injectors will all be under here. They don't like to see too much. Makes the oil filters easy to get to. Definitely a bit of oil leak from up the top, but nothing diabolical. What the hell did that? Oh, that looks like it's come off. I ended up down there. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, battery cover's gone walkies. Hmm. Pretty standard. Pierberg um, math sensor. Mercedes has the same one. <laughs> it's had a few little book fixes done to it. Hmm. Standard, standard common rail diesel. Not much more to it.